Everyone knows about the Great Pyramids of Giza, but not enough people talk or know about the Great Pyramid of Rhode Island. This is the apex building in the city of Pawtucket. It was constructed in 1969 and functioned as a large retail space and department store. This store is still in operation today, though on a much smaller scale, with the majority of the massive building being unused and closed off. Because of this, it was designated a blighted property in 2018, but we'll get to that later. This is an icon of the state, and a pretty controversial one. Even me saying that it's an icon will upset some people, since the existence of the pyramid has been seen as a roadblock to the redevelopment of the city of Pawtucket. But it's still an icon, because it's the first thing you see when you come into the state from Massachusetts, and the last thing you see when you leave Rhode Island. Which begs the question, why would you ever need to leave Rhode Island? Anyway, let's head back in time to the 1960s, when this was designed and constructed. This is where it gets interesting, because this wasn't designed just for the fun of it. Architect Andrew Geller was the mind behind the pyramid, and he always had a unique approach to design. A World War II veteran, he crafted his designs around post-war optimism, even being referred to as the architect of happiness. He's mainly known for his creative beach homes built on the New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut coastlines. A 1999 New York Times article called the homes eccentrically freeform and eye-grabbing. Another article called the homes ingenious wooden spacecraft. My point is, Andrew Geller liked to take creative risks with design. But how did he end up designing a pyramid in Pawtucket, Rhode Island? In the 1960s, Geller worked for Lowy Snaith, a New York City architecture firm responsible for revolutionizing the design of shopping centers and department stores across the United States. Places like Macy's, Lord & Taylor, Bloomingdale's, and, you guessed it, Apex department stores. They made them easily recognizable, easy to navigate, and visually pleasing. The design of this pyramid was based on the ziggurats from ancient Mesopotamia. You know, the ones with the stone steps and temples at the top? Yeah, Pawtucket, Rhode Island got its own. Seriously though, Andrew Geller's design here served two purposes. First, the pyramid theme matched perfectly with the name of the store, with the apex name being placed right at the apex of the structure. And second, by creating this massive pyramid as part of the building itself, he was able to skirt around city regulations for signage. He basically made the largest billboard in Rhode Island without it actually being a billboard. When this place opened over 50 years ago, the hype was real. This place was massive, eye-catching, and had everything you needed. It was loved by the people of Rhode Island because of course it was. One of our mascots is a big blue bug on the side of the highway, for real. So a pyramid in Pawtucket just makes sense. So what exactly happened to Apex? Apex was founded as Apex Tire in Providence in 1924. The company opened its first retail outlet, a tire store, in the late 1930s, and opened a full-size department store in Warwick, Rhode Island in 1966. Additional stores were added in Swansea, Massachusetts, and at the current location in Pawtucket. Apex was actually one of the first retailers in the United States to open an online store. And if you go to that website, it still has almost the exact same design today. I always say physical places like this are time capsules, but it's wild that there's even a website stuck in time. It honestly makes me like Apex even more. If it's nostalgia for the 90s they're selling here, then I am 100% buying it. Unfortunately, in 2001, Apex's days as a three department store chain ended when the Warwick and Swansea stores were closed and the inventory and staff at the Pawtucket flagship was drastically reduced. These closings came with the national decline in regional department stores, which coincided with increased competition with Target and Walmart. But the department store is just one piece of the larger Apex Companies group, which has seen global success with its material science company Technor Apex. Quality corrosion-proof connectors are manufactured with aviation-grade aluminum to withstand the brunt of Mother Nature's toolbox. So, while the Apex most of us knew growing up has seen better days, the Apex name will continue to live on.
Now, back to the pyramid. The Apex Building has long been seen as a potential center for urban renewal in the city of Pawtucket. This idea came with two groups of people. On one side, you had the people who wanted to keep the pyramid and reuse it for new use. They have an attachment to it, they're nostalgic, and they see it as an icon. On the other side, you have people who want urban renewal in the form of tearing it down since it doesn't exactly fit in with the historic architecture in Pawtucket. Also, its slow deterioration definitely doesn't help its case. Plans for renewal came and went, but nothing really happened to it until 2015 when the Boston Red Sox AAA team, the Paw Sox, needed space for a new stadium. The old stadium in Pawtucket, McCoy Stadium, required $68 million in renovations to be updated, so the new owners decided it would be more cost-effective to just construct a new one, and what better place than in the same city and next to a major highway. Well, again, plans fell through when the state, city, and owner of the property couldn't agree on the financial side of the deal. That's the extremely short version, and all you need to know is that the pyramid is still here today, existing in kind of a limbo between abandoned, demolished, and renovated. What's next for the Apex site? After years of failed discussions with Apex, the city of Pawtucket is taking a more aggressive approach. Mayor Donald Grebian says he's reached out to the city council and redevelopment agency, requesting that the city be allowed to take the property through eminent domain. We made a substantial, uh, you know, I say last dish effort, you know, to get this done. There was more than fear and we just can't get there. Mayor Grebian says that the city will continue to work with the Apex Group in hopes of acquiring the five parcel site through a consensual sale. If negotiations go well and the city is able to work out a deal with Apex, then the property is planned to be used for a new development called Tidewater Landing. This would be a massive event space with dining, farmers markets, festivals, and hopefully, my suggestion, another huge pyramid. Until that happens, let's just admire another Rhode Island icon on the side of the highway, a monument to a different time, because it might not be around much longer. To see more interesting abandoned places like this, you can check out the rest of my Abandoned From Above series on my channel right now. Thank you very much for watching.